give glory to God for the privilege to bring God's word to you this morning. I thank God's servant in absentia and the pastorate for this opportunity to share. I just have very few minutes to share. So we'll move very pretty fast and then we'll take the communion. But I am sure this morning that God will do something in your life that you will not recover from. God will cause a change to start in your life today that will be with you forever. And it will be a positive change in the name of Jesus. What God laid in my heart to preach this morning is very simple. In the course of the administration of senior pastor in the second service, he had mentioned some of the things that I'll be sharing this morning. Because the Spirit of God is one. I've titled my short exhortation, Choose to Rejoice. Choose to Rejoice. We'll be taking our text from Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. We'll read a couple of verses. We'll start reading from verse 4. As we look at God's word, I want to let you know that the life that we live as believers is a life of faith. Praise the name of the Lord. God has called us to live by faith. As a matter of fact, God's word says without faith, it is impossible to please God. It would have been okay if it says without faith, it is difficult to please God. It would have been manageable if it said without faith, it is hard. It's not easy without faith to please God. But that's not what God's word says. God's word says without faith, it is impossible. It is practically impossible to live a life that is pleasing to God if you don't have faith. As a matter of fact, before you can become a child of God, you must exercise faith. You must place your confidence in the work that Christ did on the cross. And believe that by accepting Christ into your heart and believing in him that your sins are forgiven. How many of us saw Jesus when you gave your life to Christ and he sat down with you and discussed with you and assured you? You did that by faith. And to succeed in this Christian race, we must live on a daily basis by what? By faith. If it takes faith to start this new life, it will take faith to sustain this life. There are some things that we read in scripture that are difficult to comprehend. As a matter of fact, Jesus was talking to his disciples sometime and they said, this is hard saying. Master, this one, who can believe this? Praise the Lord. Let's read the scripture this morning. Verse 4 of Philippians chapter 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord when? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say what? Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always means what? Always. Regardless of how you feel, God's word says we should do what? Regardless of the situation that we are in right now, God's word says we should rejoice. And for emphasis, he said, again, I say rejoice. We will explain some of these things. Let's just read. It says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Then in verse 6, it says, be careful, be anxious for nothing. 
don't be anxious. Don't be fretful. Don't be worried about anything. Don't have anxiety over anything. Is that very easy to do? No, let's tell ourselves the truth this morning. Is it very easy to not have anxiety? Is it very easy not to worry? Is it very easy not to be anxious about anything? Is it very easy? Even right here in the church, many of us have anxiety right now. Right now. In short, why some of us come to church is because we are anxious about something. But God's word says, don't be anxious, don't be fretful about anything. Don't worry yourself about anything at all. And anything means anything. Anything includes your head. Anything includes your finance. Anything includes marriage. Anything includes your children. Anything includes your future. Anything includes your job. Anything includes your career, your, your business. Every area of your life is included in anything. I don't know what is giving you sleepless night, but God's word says to you this morning, don't be anxious about it. God's word is saying to you this morning, don't worry yourself about it. Don't be fretful about it. What should you do about it? It said in verse 6, as we continue, but in everything, for emphasis, everything, big and small things, that big project, the small project, the little pain in your feet, how you get to work tomorrow? How you do that presentation tomorrow? Your operations or management meeting tomorrow? God says, everything, everything, everything that you should work by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you should make your request known to God. Don't get fretful about anything, big or small. Don't get worried about anything. Don't get anxious about anything. Don't have anxiety about anything. But by prayer and supplication. What is supplication? Making definitive requests. So prayer is communication with God. All kinds of communication. When we talk to God about anything, we are praying. But he made effort to separate prayer from supplication. Why? Because in supplication, you are definite about what you are requesting for. Are you with me this morning? In supplication, you identify the thing that you want God to do. In prayer, you can just have fellowship with God without making any request. But when it comes to supplication, you are detailing what you want God to do. God says that you come to him this morning with the details of the things that are worrying you. He said we should come to him today with the details of the things that we are anxious about. He said we should come to him today with the things that give us anxiety. The things that we are not able to sleep about. He said we should document it and present to him. When we do that, what did he say he will do? The peace of God, verse 7, which passes all understanding. Why is he emphasizing that the peace passes all understanding? It's peace in the midst of turmoil. It's peace in the midst of trouble. It's peace that your circumstances does not understand. That we are having peace in that environment. It's like when Jesus was on that boat that was turbulent. And the Bible said he was fast asleep in one corner. 
and water was already entering the boat. And the disciples were shouting, Father, Master, Master, don't you care that we'll perish? The situation looked like they were perishing, like your own situation is looking right now. It looks like there is no hope. It's all doom. It looks like there is no way of escape for you. But God said, I should tell you this morning, that if you just can cast your cares upon him, that he cares for you. God said, I should tell you this morning, that if you can cast your worries upon him, that he will take it away. He said, I should tell you this morning, that that thing that causes anxiety, that if you can just drop it at his feet this morning, that he will take it away from you. And that will happen for somebody here this morning. You will not go with that anxiety. You will not go with that worry. You will not go with that fear. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said when we cast our cares upon him, he cares for us. Now in verse 7 he says, when we beg our request, no this way. Definitive request. He said the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our heart and our mind through Jesus Christ. How many of us desire peace in our hearts today? We are living in a troubled time. There is so much to worry about. There is so much that causes us anxiety in our country, in our immediate environment, in our personal circumstances and situation. There is so much to worry about. There is so much to be fretful about. There is so much uncertainty. So much uncertainty. In the life of this country, this is perhaps one of the most uncertain times that we are living in. That's why everybody is finding a way to get out. Because you don't know what's going to happen next year. You don't know what's going to happen in 2023. You are not sure. Then it goes down to your personal economy. You don't even know where the next meal is going to come from. Yeah, we can be looking good in church, have faith in God. But if I ask people this morning, there are people that are going through tough times. Tough times. And God has said to me this morning that I should tell you that he is ready to take that worry away. He is ready to take that pain away. He is ready to take that fear away. That you will drop it here this morning and you will not find it again. In the name of Jesus Christ. You chat out people and the kind of complaints that you get. You just want to find how they are doing. And when they really tell you how they are doing. You need God at a time like this. We all need God at such a time as this. That is why this word of God is very timely for each and every one of us. Because what the devil really wants us to do is to worry. What he really wants us to do is to be fretful. And unfortunately, when we find ourselves in a situation that we can no longer trust God, that we are afraid, the devil maximizes such opportunities. Over your life and circumstances, the devil will not have a foothold in Jesus' name. peace of God that passes all human understanding will bless your heart, will keep your heart, and will keep your mind through Christ Jesus. Not through the provision that you make. Are you with me this morning? Not through the changing of the circumstance. Not through the supply that has come. But through what? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it means that the change does not have to physically happen before you enjoy the peace of God. This morning, God will start something in your life that will restore peace into your heart. A process will start in your life this morning that will ensure that you are perpetually in a state of peace, a state of rest. That regardless of what's happening in the economy or in your own personal economy or your own environment or your head, you will still be at peace. Jesus said, 
my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. He was talking to his disciples in John chapter 16 and he was telling them. I'm telling you these things. In verse 33. That in the world you have tribulations. You have trials. You have all kinds of stuff going on. Like they are going on right now. But in me, you will have peace. He said, be of good chairs because what? I've overcome the world. I said to you this morning, be of good chairs because the Lord has overcome the world. Be of good chairs because the Lord has overcome the world. Verse 8, it says, finally, my brethren. Now it's going to give you the syllabus. The things that will help you keep your peace. The thing that will help you keep your mind in the state of rest is in verse 8. Say, so finally, my brethren, what things so ever, what so ever things are true. Okay? What so ever things are honest. What so ever things are just. What so ever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. All our anxiety, all our fears, all our worries start from the heart, start with a thought. True of us. Everything that you get worried about starts as a thought in your heart. And the thought is usually based on uncertainty about the outcome of the events of your life. You are not sure how tomorrow is going to be. You are not sure if you are going to get married. You are not sure if you are going to continuously enjoy your marriage. You are not sure if you are going to always have finances to deal with all the issues that you need finances to deal with. You are not sure you are not sure, you are not sure, you are not sure. And once you are not sure, your mind starts to wander and starts to create scenarios. And most of the time, our mind does not create best case scenario, it creates worst case scenarios. If you don't train your mind, if you don't control your mind, it will always create the worst scenario for you. That is why God's word is the first and most important instrument, weapon that you can use to guide your heart. The Bible says we should guide our heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. As a child of God, I told us at the beginning that this Christian life must be lived by faith. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing what? The word of God. We cannot survive without the word of God filling our hearts. So the strategy to ensure that you enjoy this peace that we are describing this morning is to have the word of God fill your heart. Somebody say, I'll fill my heart with the word of God. I'll fill my heart with the word of God. There is so much negativity outside there. Tune to any channel apart from the gospel channels, is all negative, negative, and negative. And as a matter of fact, they said, good news is not news. Breaking news. When you hear breaking news, don't expect they're going to say something good. If it's breaking news, it's not good news, most of the time. And the devil tries to control all of us with the media. We are so addicted to the media in these our times that we don't have the time to study the word of God. We know what's happening everywhere. We know what everybody is saying because as they are posting it, you are seeing it. We know what's happening in everybody's life. In such a strategy that the devil has perfected in this end time to ensure that God's children 
are distracted. You will not be distracted in Jesus' name. The consequence of that is we don't have time to study the word of God. And yet, we need the word of God to fight all the negativity that is around us. So my counsel to us this morning is that we will find time to fill our heart with the word of God. As we find in verse 8, God specifically instructed that before you think about anything, you must confirm, is it true? So if the devil drops thoughts in your heart this afternoon, this morning, later in the night before you go to bed, ask yourself, is it true? Some things are fact, but they are not truth. Are you with me this morning? Some things are fact, but they are not truth. You may not have physical cash in your pocket. That does not mean that you are poor. Do you understand this money? And you may not be feeling very good today. That does not mean that you are sick. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, let the sick say what? So if the devil brings a suggestion, first of all, confirm it with the word of God. Is it true? What he's suggesting right now, is it the truth? Is it the final conclusive statement from God? Or is it just a suggestion? Every suggestion is subject to the authority of the word of God. So whatever anybody suggests to you, whatever Satan suggests to you, whatever your mind suggests to you, you must extract it with the word of God. If it's not true, delete immediately. And don't delete in your house. Speak out. Speak out. Somebody say speak out. You say, I reject that thought because it's not in alignment with the word of God. It's not in alignment with God's plan for me. It's not in alignment with God's purpose for my life. I reject that thought right now. As you are saying it, it is vanishing from you. If you are just thinking about it, it can stay and linger for much more time. But you rebuke it confidently. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I like to drive alone. When, when I'm driving alone, I have good time. I wind up. Sometimes I put this in my ear. I'm not listening to music. I'm shouting inside the car. I'm programming myself. Are you with me? You need some alone time to program yourself. Disconnect from all the distractions. And tell God and tell yourself what you really want to see in your life. So every time the devil brings a suggestion, I show it with the word of God. Is it true? Is it the truth? Is it not the truth? You delete. You counter it with the word of God. Praise the Lord. If the thing that the enemy is suggesting to you in your heart right now is not honest, if there is dishonesty in the thought that is in your heart, it is not in alignment with the word of God. Rebuke it straight away. Anytime the devil comes to you and says, you see, because you have been exercising faith, you see how your mates have gone ahead of you. This is where you are going to be. The other new staff will soon jump ahead of you. This is the business you have been doing. That guy that just started this, see how far he has gone. You are here. You are trusting God. He suggests dishonest means to you to make advancement, temporary advancement. God's word is not in alignment with what the devil is suggesting. So you rebuke that thought. Are you with me this morning? He said, if the thing is not honest, don't think about it. If it is not truth, don't think about it. Okay? If it is not just, you want to do something, but you know it's not right, it's not just, it's not fair. God's word says, don't think about it. The reason the devil brings all of these things into our mind is because once we begin to think about them, they create negative atmosphere in our lives. We go outside of the circle of God's protection. And we attract negativity into our life. That create the fear and the worry because once you have stepped outside the circle of God's protection over your life, you know that as a child of God, if you have done anything wrong before and you knew that right now, you are disconnected. Can I see your hands? Okay, many of us are perfect now. We don't make mistakes again. I thank God for your life. If you derail 
and you don't have a prompting in your heart anymore, you have a problem. Serious problem. If you do anything that is contrary to the word of God, and you are not feeling anything, please wait after the service, let's gist. Because the devil has taken over completely. So when I make mistakes, I know that I've made mistakes. I know I have failed. I know that I'm outside of the covering. And it's a dangerous place to be. So I quickly come under the cross. Like all of us should do. Every time the thought that is not from God comes into our heart, that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. If we manifest the thought, then we will be outside of God's will, outside of God's protection, exposed to all the dangers, exposed to anxiety, fear, and worry. When we are in that state, the devil can do anything. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. If it is not just, don't think about it at all. If it is not pure, don't think about it. It's not saying don't do it. Don't even think about it. What you are wanting to do is not pure. Don't entertain it in your heart. If we want to announce it on Sunday and you will not be comfortable, don't think about it. The thought in your heart now, if we want to show it on the screen, how comfortable will you be? The Bible says don't even entertain it in your mind. Praise the Lord. If it is not lovely, don't think about it. If it is not of good report, don't think about it. If it has no virtue inside of it, don't think about it. If it's not praiseworthy, don't think about it. If all of us from today can begin to use this scripture to monitor our thoughts, to control our thoughts, and live daily by it, we will push worry, anxiety, and fear far from ourselves. My prayer for you today that every worry, fear, and anxiety in your heart, God will take them over today. In the name of Jesus Christ. The choir sang that what God cannot do, what God cannot solve, doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So no matter what situation you are in right now, God can solve it. No matter what is giving you worry, fear, and anxiety right now, God can solve it. God can fix that situation for you. And that's what he wants to do in the life of everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice this morning. He wants to fix your fear. He wants to fix your worry. He wants to fix your anxiety. He wants you to be able to sleep in the night without worries. In these times, so many people can't sleep at night. So many young people, they are blood pressure drops. Young people. Young people. People are fretful of today. And they are fretful of tomorrow. Even those that things seem to be going on well for are still afraid of what may happen. I was in a meeting with my university classmates a few weeks ago. And as we were sharing, I, I was just wondering, how come young people, people my age, everybody is taking drugs for blood pressure. And I'm wondering, why? There's fear. There's uncertainty. Some of the people are doing well, but they are afraid. They are doing well. But they are afraid. That will not be your experience in Jesus' name. I rebuke every fear. I rebuke every worry. I rebuke every anxiety. I rebuke every hopelessness. Every cloud that the devil has cast over you to cover the joy of the Lord. I command them removed this morning. 
In the name of Jesus Christ. The fear over your career, the fear over your head, the fear over your marriage, the fear over your sickness, over your children. I cause them to die this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the peace of God be restored in your heart. I declare that the love of God be restored in your heart. I declare that hope be restored in your life. I declare restoration of peace in the name of Jesus Christ. God said to me as I was preparing for this message. That even as it is in the scripture, he said we should come with prayer and supplication. As for supplication, he said definitive requests. He said I should tell you this morning to take a sheet of paper and write all the things that you are worried about. The things that you are afraid, you are consciously worried about this area of your life. He said you should write it down. And I want you to do it this morning. Because God does not change. God does not lie. He has said we should cast all our cares upon him. Because he does what? He cares for us. And he has promised that in this service he will take those worries. He will take those pains. He will take those fear from you. And that you will go home free from fear. Free from worry. Free from uncertainty. So quickly, take a note. Take a piece of paper, write down your fears, your worry. You don't need to write your name. Just write the things that you are afraid about, the things that are giving you worry, that are giving you anxiety. So you should write it down. Write it down. If it's four things, write them down. If it's one thing, write it down. Because he said, if you cast your care upon him today, that he will take it away. He will take your fear away. He will take your anxiety away. He will take your worry away. The reason that we fear is because we don't have confidence that he will take it away. If you are certain that he will take it away, you will not have fear. Let's bow our head this morning. He's taking it away this morning. He's taking it away this morning. I need the choir to help me sing that song. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all my body down at your feet. Anytime I don't know what next to do, all I'll do, I'll just cast all my cares upon you. And as you cast your care upon the Lord this morning, he will take it away. You will go home free. You will go home free. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are going home free this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. Every time I don't know If you are finished writing, you can stand up this morning as we worship the Lord together. Amen.
the Lord about those cares. Tell the Lord about those worries. He said you should cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Talk to him right now like you believe that he will hear you, like you believe that he will answer you. Talk to the Lord this morning like you believe that he will hear you and that he will answer you. Cast those cares upon him with all of you have this morning. He promised that he will answer, that he will take those cares away. If you have written those things down, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it right now. Squeeze it right now because you will not see them again. I declare this morning that all of those cares and worries, God will take them over from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every fear, every worry, everything that has given you sleepless night, I ask that the Lord Almighty, who can do all things, will take over them in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, turn around in your situation. I declare victory over your present circumstances. I declare perpetual victory for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare perpetual victory for you in the name of Jesus Christ. It is done this morning. Receive the joy of the Lord. As you choose to rejoice, you will find joy. Joy unspeakable. Joy that passes all understanding. Receive it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. It is yours. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you have heard us. Thank you because you have answered. We can trust upon you. This is the confidence that we have that when we call upon you, you hear and you answer. Thank you for answering us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We'll be coming for communion very quickly. As you come for communion, whatever worries that you have written down, you just drop it on this altar. You will not find them again. When you cast something, you, 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 don't, you drop it down. It's no longer with you. By faith this morning, you drop and cast that care. You will not find it again in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Very quickly, let us package our offerings. If you have the envelope by your side, you please use the envelope. Otherwise, you can give online using all the various channels that are available. You can give by making transfer to Realty Christian Center. You see it in the bulletin. You can also use the USD code star 402 star 7700922 star amount hash the funds go straight into the church account if you want to use the POS we have POS on my left hand side please quickly as we do that let us pray father we give unto you today we ask that that which you are giving be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that it be used for the expansion of your work and in return you'll bless us and make us blessings indeed in Jesus' name. As we come to the communion table this morning, we ask, O oh Lord, that you bless this table, the cup and the bread in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that it will cause a turnaround in our lives, it will cause a turnaround in our situation in the name of Jesus Christ. As we do this in remembrance of you, may your presence abide with us permanently in the name of Jesus Christ. This week we'll have testimonies concerning that which your presence will do in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. The choir, give us a song as we come for the communion this morning. He is able to accomplish Sons me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able.
make me what he wants me to be.
Hallelujah. Will you please stretch for your two hands this morning? The powerful things of God are very simple. The efficacy of the gospel is in its simplicity. Jesus told them, be unto you according to your faith. Nicodemus came to him. He said, except a man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. This morning, the word of God has come to you in its simplicity, in its power, in its grace, in its efficacy. God's servant told us that God asked him that we should drop all our burden on the altar. Hear me this morning. He said, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You have poured forth your heart to him this morning. You've brought your burden. You've dropped the yokes. You've dropped the disease and sickness. You've dropped poverty this morning. You drop backwardness. You have dropped generational curse. You have dropped failure. You have dropped rejection. This morning, as you stretch for your hand, pick your testimonies. Pick your testimonies. You can't drop something and not pick something. Pick up your miracle. Pick up your testimony. Pick up your liberation. If your faith can carry it, oh yeah, pick up your twins. If it is promotion, pick up your promotion. If your faith can carry it, take up your 24 hours miracle. Take up your 24 hours miracle. Maybe it's so urgent. He said, now is the accepted time. Now is your observation. Pick up your one hour miracle. If it is so urgent, as you step up of this auditorium, receive that phone call. Receive that text message. Receive that email. You will testify. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Shout glory. And bless this morning.